Hello, for those that don't know me, I'm Dave. Um, I play guitar and I program computers. Two things which don't always go together. And I'm here to tell you about an exciting sort of new thing that I've uh, done. Well, I hope it's exciting. It is to me anyway. Um, and basically what I've done is I've written something which you can put in a photo, a, a JPEG or whatever image you want, and it goes through the pixels and with various bits of code converts those pixels to waves which can then be played back on your computer or through a Marshall stack, which is what I did. This is the boring bit, Geek Alert. Um, so basically the code goes through each pixel, starting from the top left, working down the first column, then onto the second column, then onto the third column, and works its way across the picture. And there's various things of information you can get from a pixel. Uh, pixels are made up of red, green, and blue. Um, and you can also get how bright it is based on various things. I mean, blue and red are not as uh, visible to humans as green, so green, if there's a bit of green in something, it tends to be a lot brighter perception-wise to red and blue. But basically, you can get a brightness level, and um, then you can get the red, green, and blue um, levels out of it. And by using these values, you can then create uh, a number which is sort of what frequency you want and how long you want that to be and how loud you want it to be. Um, so what I used here in my program is the brightness of it basically decided how loud it was going to be. So something that was very dark would be quiet and something that was very bright would be loud. And then I used the red channel to decide the length of the note. So for example, a lot of red might mean that the note lasts a second and not much red at all might mean that the note's gone completely, very, very quickly. Um, and then I made it so the green channel would decide what octave the note was going to be in. So if it was a lot of green, then it would suddenly jump up high, and if it was almost no green, it would be sitting around in the sort of the bass notes. And the amount of blue decided what harmonic it was going to be. There's 12 notes um, in the normal kind of chromatic scale. Um, so basically, the amount of blue was separated into 12 sections and each one of those represented a note. So by taking the amount of blue, you get the harmonic you want, the amount of green, you get what octave you want that to be in, the red would be the length of the note and the brightness of it ends up being the volume of the note. If you've got a picture with, you know, a thousand pixels in it or something like that, you very quickly get thousand notes that have a different pitch and different amplitude um, and of course different length on each note as well. When you get a photo you think how can a photo be represented by music but photos have patterns in them that's what we look at we see someone's face our brains recognizing it as a pattern so music is just patterns as well um, on a very basic level it's just patterns and it's like patterns of vibration um, and obviously we pick up on this and decode these patterns and that's what makes our brain think it's music. So I, but I had a thought one day that what if these patterns in the photo were converted into sound somehow? And this seemed like the, uh, the most obvious way to start doing what I'm talking about doing was to go eat through each pixel and just somehow assign it a pitch. Now these things to do with the red, green and blue and the brightness I just completely made up. There's nothing special about these values whatsoever. I literally just thought, I'll make the blue do this, I'll make the red do that, I'll make the green do that, I'll make the brightness do that. And it sounded nice. Um, I didn't fiddle with it too much. I added a one here or there, or took a one off here or there, or and I put in a control to change the limit, the number of octaves it could shoot between, and had a bit of a play around initially, but most of it was literally just the first thing I, I typed into the computer. And it produced some really interesting things. If you look at this photo here, this is a photo of um, the Aussie Floyd live. Um, you can see that at the beginning of the sound, because the, the most left-hand side of the picture is very dark, and the most right-hand side of the picture is very dark, so both of those have got very low, quiet notes. And then as it gets more into the middle, you get a lot of interesting um, 
melodies coming out of that particular pattern. Then of course when it gets back down to the bottom where the audience are, it goes dark again. So you get these recurring patterns, which get more and more intense as it gets towards the middle of the picture. And then as it comes out the other side of the picture, it gets less and less intense until it goes back to being dark again. Um, and that's a good, if you look at the waveform, you can kind of see how that represents the picture as well. What I did is I got together six pictures and listened to the results from these pictures. I scaled them down a bit because having a thousand by thousand pixel picture takes forever and um, ended up with something which sounded quite sort of random even though it is absolutely far from random because random would be white noise. The fact that there's patterns that you can pick up shows that it's not coming from random at all but it sounds random because it's not the sort of music that a human would write. It's not the sort of melodies that you just pick up because it's not something you hear on the radio. People tend to recycle things they've heard before. We've ended up with six waves that then I could listen to and think, well, what's the kind of the fundamental note? And I got a feeling of what key it was in, so to speak, even though there's moments of it being quite atonal. I would just drone a synth underneath that section of, of, um, of the generated wave files. Um, to get a fundamental kind of base of it, people often say that um, when you're playing in modes that you need to have the note droning underneath otherwise you don't get the full picture of it. It might just sound like a major scale in a different key. It's not till you put the, the note in underneath that suddenly it all makes sense. Um, and then after that I chucked on some drum beats. I just chucked them in and looped them around. There's not many feels. That wasn't, it's not really about the drums. It was just about to have something to sort of keep some time. And then uh, I listened to that for a while um, and then started to improvise over the top with um, a baritone Dan Electro, which I bought a few weeks ago. And then I put some 12 string on top of it for the last three or four sections of it. And then I added some lead guitar using um, Road One Mech Strat that I've got for the last two sections. So that gets a little bit more guitar -y. The first thing I tried um, was the Dark Side of the Moon album cover, kind of a mock-up of that. I just got a JPEG from um, Google with with a rendition of it. It's not actually the album cover, but it's as you know, it's as close as I need to get with it. It's a good representation. Uh, the next two pieces were taken from two different Aussie Floyd pictures, one of which had the nice bright arch of lights and the other one had that but it was a lot brighter generally out to the audience and they're quite similar in some ways because they're coming from photos that fundamentally have a lot of the same texture but because one is darker than the other and uh, made up of different colours they're similar but part three is almost like the more in-depth version of part two which I, which I quite liked. The next one was a picture of my 1973 Strat which I took the day after I bought it it was lying on a hotel room bed somewhere in Texas. You can sort of hear the way it blips and then it gets more across the photo and you get more of the guitar showing and it's not so much of the white bed sheet. Suddenly it sort of starts to take off and becomes very interesting. Um, the fifth piece is a picture of me and my ex-girlfriend Crystal. Um, I picked the picture because I think we both look quite happy and nice in it and I was just interested to see the tones that it came out. And it's uh, an interesting set of tones because it kind of started with a minor sort of feel about it and sounded quite sad for the first maybe minute or so and then it suddenly just jumped into this thing which started to sound a bit more major. So um, I quite quite enjoyed the contrast of the, the, the two feels within that piece so um, that one was that but I didn't want to finish on that one so I grabbed a picture of my Blue Flower Telecaster from Facebook and, and put it in and uh, it, it made some great sounds because the, the outer edges of the picture um, don't actually have the guitar in it's like a white wall and then it gives a bit of floor so you get this kind of as it's going down the white and then it as it gets to the floor it goes and it does all that and then of course as the guitar gets in it gets more and more strange and then as it gets to the end the other side of the picture it goes back to this kind of long continuous tone and stuff and that sounds really really cool and that's that's it really um, it's an experiment it's about 40 minutes long um, I haven't taken anything out of the waves, I haven't cut bits or repeated bits that I thought so the night. It is literally the waveform of the picture and all I did was crossfade the last half second of each waveform. So, so all six picture waves play in, um, 
in one sequence. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, I really enjoyed making it. It didn't take long, um, and I find it quite relaxing to listen to, to be honest. So if you uh, want to give me some feedback, tell me what you think about it, you can leave a comment under this video or under the piece, um, which will be the link underneath, or you can contact me via my website, which is down there somewhere. Um, yeah, you can find me Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, all of those things. I hope I haven't bored you too much. So uh, let me know what you think.